Hey everybody, it's Gamer Gramps here, and today we're going to be talking about water mills and city walls, why they're absolute trash, and how they trap players turning great starts into shit games. Before we get started here, you should take a quick second to like the video. This way, you train YouTube to let it know you like watching content about the games you play, and you definitely want to get better at them faster. Better yet, feel free to leave me a comment too while you're at it. That would definitely help a small channel like me grow, and clearly, if you know anything about me, I need all the help I can get. This is going to be a super short video that gets right to the point. You might be wondering how that's true after seeing how long it actually is, but like all my videos, I have it organized with a timestamp so you can jump through whenever you want. If you look now, you'll see the part where I'm going to actually teach you about why these buildings are screwing you over is actually very short, and I definitely suggest just sticking around for that part and then taking my word for it without having to see it happen in real time. So after I've said my piece about why you're screwing yourself hard and your games if you build water mills and city walls. We'll then jump to the end of our test simulation and evaluate our progress in the game after buying the same tiles, researching the same texts and civics, and looking to build the same monument, trader, and settler in both scenarios. By then, if you're not just willing to take my word for it about the city wall situation being the same, then you're more than welcome to stick around and see me essentially do the same experiment with surviving an early war with with and without city walls. Or, hear me out, and I know this may seem crazy, you could always do yourself a favor and save some time by skipping the rest of this video, take my word for it, and just start winning your games faster. But thank god you're probably too stubborn to do that and I'll have you here with me to the bitter end. So anyway, I recently made a video about 5 mistakes everybody seems to make in the early game and it got a little pushback, so I wanted to cover the specific mistake in a little more detail. I'll pin a link to that video video in the top of the comments section for you, but for now let's dive right into this together. The biggest reason that the water mill is a trash building in Civ 6 is that it has a production cost of 80 production. While that isn't a completely mind blowing amount of production, the important thing to realize is that there isn't a policy card available in the game right now that you can slot in and get it a production boost to build it any faster. That means that it's 80 cold hard, unboosted production needed, and it only gives you a measly plus one production a turn, meaning it literally has to exist for 80 fucking turns before you can break even on it, let alone start reaping the rewards. Okay, okay, I can imagine you saying something like, well, you also get plus one food with it, and can even more with an additional plus one, plus one food for every bonus, fuck, plus one food for every bonus resource tile improved with a farm in this city. Fair enough. You know, it sounds like a reasonable point. I would counter with the fact that a builder is 50 production, meaning you can grab two of them for 100 production. Yeah, I know, it may surprise you, but I am case- I am capable of basic math, just not speaking English apparently. But anyway, so your two builders are going to run you 100 production costs versus the 80 for the water mill. But then you have to factor in being able to slot in the Ilkum policy card for a plus 30% discount on the production of builders. This essentially means that you're able to get two builders for 70 production, saving 10 from that oh so glorious water mill you have your heart set on. The six charges from those two builders are going to give you a lot more yields in that city than the water mill ever could. Not to mention, it's going to give you them a lot faster, meaning the crazy higher yields actually compound that much more over time. Plus, as another advantage, you don't have to go down that part of the tech tree until you actually want to do it, so it's not interrupting your strategy depending on the wind condition you're chasing. Now that hopefully you can follow my logic there and see reason on the subject, that's quite quickly talk about city walls and why they are a bad idea in single player games. For starters, masonry is definitely out of the way unless you're trying to build the pyramids or have a lot of stone that you want to chop out. Now, city walls is a step above the water mill in my opinion because it does have a policy card that can boost your production on it. In fact, the limes policy card gives you plus 100% production towards it, so that's a huge boost. The problem, though, is that the policy card isn't available until you get all the way to defend defensive tactics, so you aren't going to be able to take advantage of it in the early game. The only point where you could possibly convince me 
the city walls would be justified, which leads us to the inevitable part where we don't agree. There isn't a snowball's chance in hell that you're going to convince me that going out of my way to research masonry quickly enough that I might possibly find the city walls helpful only to then have to actually build it for 80 production again with no boost because limes isn't available until later for it to come out and apparently save me from this DD level invasion where they start the game turn one with five warriors and have all the production and gold bonuses that God could grant them to build a bigger army from there. But see, that's where it gets even worse for you. You spend all that time investing in masonry and then wasted all that production only to find out that your city walls combat strength is a reflection of your strongest units combat strength, which at this point would be a warrior. So essentially your city walls attack is a fucking fly swatter and the deity level AI will have swordsmen and catapults any turn now. So then you have to double down or your walls are explorers for the hot mess they actually are. And now you have to go even further out of your way and grab either iron working or horseback riding in order for your walls to not fall over like a house of cards which is going to set you back even further from winning your game. Now, let's get to what you should be doing instead of wasting your life and your game away with city walls. And that's to actually throw in the Goge policy card, which gives you plus 50% production towards melee and range units and is available super early. You unlock it with craftsmanship. Yes, that's the one right after you finished your very first civic code of laws if you're keeping score. Throw that card in and build yourself four slingers. Each slinger is 35 production but when you cut that in half it means you can literally build four slingers for less production than your city wall and you don't have to go out of your way to get any technology to do this not to mention that hey for one they aren't a city wall so they can actually fucking move and reposition and shoot and two that better yet they upgrade into archers which kill shit even faster all right so that's the end of my attempt to teach you how important it is to avoid building wall water mills and city walls and what you should do instead. If you haven't already, please leave a like on the video and a comment down below and let me know if I've managed to convince you yet or if you're going to needlessly watch the rest of this video to see just how stupid and stubborn you can get. I'm obviously just dicking around. I'm the last person to be calling anybody stupid. But if you found this helpful, consider checking out some more of my videos. My whole channel is based around helping you get better at the games you love and doing it faster than learning things the hard way. All right, so here we go we are gonna take a look at this i honestly haven't even like actually checked the results myself but you're gonna see i'm so i'm confident enough that I, I don't even need to see this to just do this completely unscripted so we're gonna go into my save files here and what are we looking for we're looking for the turn 48 trash all right so here we are we are inside the trash version of the game and this is where we have the water mill so we're turn 48 this is 10 turns after we completed the watermill in our little experiment here we're taking a look at our city we're taking a look at the tiles and the yields and what we have going on all right so here we're one turn away from a trader so that's good that's a good thing come coming up online for us quickly here we're still on production focus and we're popping out 19.8 production at this point with the population of seven which hey that's very respectable there's 19 culture going on 5.7 science you know 7.6 food not too shabby not too shabby okay and you can see here i haven't changed this in the other game the only two tiles i have locked in are that one and that one which are clearly a mistake and i overlooked this but i overlooked it in both games so i fucked up equally so it's not gonna contaminate our experiment anyway back to the point here the tiles that i purchased I purchased them in the same order. I bought this tile here first, that one next, and that one third. Let's take a quick look and see what else we got going on. So the city has its monument. We've completed the monument. It's a good thing. Okay, so now we have our benchmark. This is what your water mill got you in a perfect situation where you're playing with a civilization that gives you crazy yields from your tiles. And you start off with three tiles that are improved, sorry, 
You're starting off with three tiles that have bonus. Fuck me, I can't speak English. You're starting out with three bonus resources that get improved by farms, which is decent. So it would be a good argument that, hey, maybe a watermill isn't a bad idea. So we built one. Now let's go into the alternate universe where we didn't build this fucking trash in the exact same situation with those great tiles, with the great yields and all the rest. All right, look at that. The magic of YouTube. Our city's at six population. Shit, the other one was seven. Hey, you know, those fucking plus three food from the watermill. Oh, maybe, maybe I'm just fucking dumb. Maybe, right? Okay, let's keep going. Yep. Those same two tiles are locked in, so I fucked up equally as bad in both of these examples. You can hold that against me, but you can't hold that against my logic about the watermill. All right, production, 20. That's better, not much better. I mean, it's only like 0.2 or something, but still better. Food, yes, it's less. I think the other one was seven or whatever. Anyway, everything else is pretty much on point. However, this is where hopefully with any luck, I can show you the air of your ways. So this is 10 turn turns later. I did the same things. I progressed. I took the same tech tree. I went, I wouldn't do this normally. I'm going for masonry because I'm doing this city walls example after this. So that's why I fucking beeline for masonry. Anyway, that's besides the point. I went to the same four turns left in archery like I would do in order to be ready to defend myself if I had to then switched into masonry and civics wise I went the same path too now here's the real kick in the nuts for you who likes to build watermills I purposely started this comparison inside the city why oh shit that's why I'm at six population because I already built my fucking settler. Oh, Jesus, fuck. It looks like there's a trader there that has, oh, oh, several turns worth of road going from our second city to the capital now. Wow. It's almost like a water mill is a trash fucking building. Now, seriously, look at this. Okay, boom. We're gonna throw that guy on. How do our little stats change here? If we wanted to play around, we could do that. Either way, this city is set up for success. Not only that, looking at the tech tree, we've already got political philosophy in this version of things. We still have our monument that we built everything is the same we own the same tiles i kept working the same shitty things that were the mistake but yet we have a settler completed and the traders completed and has been i built them in the exact same order i started with the trader first and then i would start on a settler next it's the exact same thing except for we are way 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 better off sorry for being an asshole it's just the way i get some times but i'm hopefully coming across as an asshole for the right reasons and that's because i want you to get better at this game please don't make this mistake be better also if you really 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 love watermills then do yourself a favor buy it with gold later when you have a good income or chop it with magnus if you really really need one but now that this is out of the way, hopefully you understand what I've been trying to say. I'm going to rewind the clock a little bit and we're going to jump back to the point where we were completely surrounded by that fucker's troops, the uh, unfriendly AI who at that point had already denounced us. So let's go back to that point and we're going to declare war on him and see just which route is better. Build the city walls that you have your heart set on or maybe just just maybe take my word for it and don't do that all right thanks to the magic of youtube here we are we're back on turn 38 in the version where we went for builders and not the trash that is city or oh, wait <laughs> i can't speak english not the trash that is fuck i'm not doing this without coffee Okay, it's hot as hell, but that's better. Let's try this again. So here we are. We're in our alternate world where we made the better choice and opted to go for builders over the watermill. I'm not going to rub salt in your wounds. Let's just stay focused. So this is now my example to try and show you that city walls are just trash. You should only be building one and it shouldn't be until later in the game when you have defensive tactics here. 
right there. And you can get the Lime's Policy card for the 100% pr production bonus towards defensive build. Let me show you why. In this example, this is the example where we're going to go for city walls. So in a hypothetical world, we're going to pretend that we were attacked by Arabia here. In reality, we're going to declare a surprise war on him here. Okay. So we are now at war. Hypothetically, oh my god, he attacked us or is about to. Which clearly, I might say that he was planning on here. However, because I have my warrior position where I could keep him away from our city, he didn't, right? So in our little example, we're actually gonna back up and I'm gonna fortify here so he can only send one warrior against us at a time. And hopefully that'll buy us some more time here. Now, we need our fucking city walls. <laughs> so we gotta get towards masonry real quick cause oh boy, the big bad fucking DDI is coming for us and all that. Let's get our builder back in our city cause we're at war and he has a scout there. And again, look how far away from fucking masonry we are. Okay, yeah, I'm about to build a quarry. A quarry, sorry. <laughs> it will speed it up a little bit, but look at this, okay? Really, like, this is painful for me to do right now. I am cringing so hard on the inside, you don't even understand. Ugh, I'm just disgusted with myself, oops, for doing this. But meanwhile, before I forget about it, we're gonna unlock those tiles, and so we'll just be working the best tiles that we can. Uh, in the meantime, we're gonna go ahead and buy some tiles. All right, so again, it's going to be a while before we can start building that, so we might as well do some productive shit. Let's get that monument going. Let's build our quarry. Quarry. I keep calling it a quarry. Oh my god, I need more coffee. Anyway, coffee doesn't help with stupid. I know, but still, it's the thought. I'd like to go with it. Anyway, let's change up our policies. Now we're in a war. It'd be great to be able to produce units fast, but oh wait, <laughs> we're not going to be doing that because we're going for a wall. Uh, but in the meantime, though, clearly some urban planning wouldn't be a bad idea so we can build that wall faster when we eventually do get to it. And I mean, really, since we're going to be building a wall, there's not really a point to having a goge in. Why don't we just keep getting our scouts improvement? Because wall, wall, wall. Yeah, go team. Still five turns away. The good thing is that I can get my scout upgraded real quick. <laughs> anyway, continuing on here. Four turns and counting. Okay, you know what? Fuck it. I'm just going to edit to the point when we get the fucking masonry. Okay, here we go. We finally got masonry. Like, we're already turned 46 to get this garbage. Anyway, we're here now. We have the garbage. So, we want ancient walls. Oh, 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 yeah, baby. So, again, let's make sure. Look at, we're on production focus. And you know what? For the sake of I can't bring myself not to, we're going to put off starting our amazing walls. One more turn. We're actually going to finish this trader in order to get a boost of production to make your shitty walls that much faster. All right. So. There we go. For those caring, I went into military tradition on purpose so that we could start earning great general points if we were going domination. But more importantly, we get flanking and support bonuses for all combat units. Oh wait, we only have one because we're going for city walls. But hey, you're the boss. Now that we have masonry completed, I guess we go towards archery, which is what I would normally do. I'll stop crying a little bit eventually. I'm sorry. All right, so again, they can't get past our warrior there. We got four turns until our glorious walls are finished. Let's double check. We don't want to change anything in here. We're still building that shit for four more turns. So there's no point having any card other than the survey slotted in right now. Uh, we're getting an extra two gold from that caravan and we're building walls faster with extra production in, in the capital. So 
I think policy card wise, we're doing okay. Oh look, here comes the warrior. Good thing we're building our city walls. All right, our warrior got promoted. We're taking battle cry. I'm not listening to anybody's opinion. We're taking battle cry. All right, anyway, with our scout here, we might as well let this guy attack us a little bit more to keep basically just distracting him for as long as humanly possible because we still have three turns until city walls come out. Look, their scout is inside of our city. Jeez, I hope he doesn't pillage our tiles. Good thing he only has two turns until our city walls come out. Our scout got double promoted thanks to that stooge. So let's just back up and take our second promotion. <laughs> so there's one good thing that came out of this whole situation. Anyway. Yeah, let's take free and free. Moving on with our lives. Oh, this still just hurts my brain to do. Okay, so we are officially down to one turn. One turn left on our freaking glorious, amazing, totally worthwhile city walls there. I don't know what I would do if I didn't have my city walls coming next turn. Good lord. Oh, wow. Thanks to the great AI, they didn't pillage any of our tiles. Oh wait, maybe they're going for our horses. It's a good thing we finally got city walls. Now we're okay. Now, it makes sense that we change things in one turn here. Next turn, we can start cranking out some units. Good thing we have archery now, you know. We're, we're, we're doing okay, thanks to our city walls. Oh, jeez. That fucked him up bad. It's a good thing we got our city walls. Because, you know, our city defense definitely is not tied in to the strength of our strongest combat unit. And those city walls are definitely going to fuck their shit right up. Okay, well, now that we know that, I mean, sh shit, let's go to boards bronze working. We need to get swordsmen going on. Or horsemen, even. You know what? Horsemen, that would be better, right? We're already on archery. There you go. Eight turns. And we got horses. Oh, shit's looking real. We're, 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 we're okay. We're okay. We're okay. God, I'm getting annoying even to myself pretending this. But anyway, this is as far as I'm taking this stun. Okay, you see this? Turn 51, we just got our fucking walls. We're eight turns away still from those walls even being useful. Like, look at this shit. Look it. Let's just fucking let, let them in. Let's let everybody in. Come get us. You know what? Fuck this. We're, we're not going to pillage. We're just going to delete you. You're, you're distracting me. Let's get back here. Okay. We'll even bring our warrior back. So our city is stronger. Okay. We finish our ancient walls. Let's get started on archery. Next turn we'll slot in. You know, let's build some walls here. We fucking have walls now. Let's get Magnus going in that second city. Because, hey. It has shit production, so we better chop us some walls. <laughs> All right, here we go. I mean, these walls are definitely worth it. Okay, but yeah, we get rid of survey, put it in a go gay. We're keeping all the rest of that shit and go. Okay, I, I, I just, I can't even do this. This is like, I'm just, 
I'm honestly getting so fucking angry just doing this for the sake of doing it. Like, I'm only doing it for this little video and I'm ready to have a, a fucking aneurysm over here. I don't know. I think I just wasn't built for certain certain things. Anyway, let's go ahead and just delete this guy too. Why can't I delete you? Pet? What the fuck? Oh, I can pet my dog? I didn't even know that was a thing. Oh. Okay, I'm not gonna delete you. You can heal up, buddy. In fact, let's get you back inside. Let's get you safe. We're gonna bring you and your dog in that city. Okay, let's get another archer. Alright, and we literally opened the floodgates, but nobody came. So I'm definitely glad that I've spent all this time getting the, the city walls. Like, thank God. What the fuck would I do? Might as well start on a settler now. But now I just crippled myself. Like, look how look how far back we put ourselves. Just for these stupid ass city walls. Really? Okay. Turn 59. And hey, guess what? They're not even useful yet. Because we still have to actually build a fucking horseman. Alright, so I, I knew this ahead of time. I was planning for it. That's why we're going to chop here. But we don't have the right policy card. So the chop's going to be wasted. Isn't that great? Okay, so we would theoretically have to wait until next turn to do this chop. So, hey, I'm so glad I bit. Oh, the look at here comes a warrior. And now we got defensive tactics. If only there was a policy card that could help us build city walls if I actually wanted them and they weren't completely shit. And I just waited. If only. Yeah. All right. You get the fucking point, right? Let's go ahead and slot and maneuver. And there you go. We chopped a horseman. Our wall isn't complete garbage now. It's only half garbage. Let's let this thing come close closer. I'm just gonna put you to sleep because I don't want to play this garbage anymore. We're just gonna pick whatever, whatever. It literally doesn't matter. I'm just clicking anything at this point. Because like, we want the grand finale, right? Oh, oh wait, it didn't even come to our city. It must be because we have those crazy cool city walls. Okay, this is enough. Look at turn 62. We finally have walls that are good and nobody's even come to play. So let's go back now and pretend that we didn't build that fucking heart hot garbage. Here we go. We're in magic land here where we're we didn't just waste our life and another what 20 22 23 turns before our city wall was built and not complete dog shit only half dog shit so here we are let's do this a different way we're still hey you know what 
I'm trying to prove a point. It's time for war. Okay. But hey. We can just block them off, right? We know this. No. We're just going to let those fuckers come right on in. Come play with us. Okay? This is to show you exactly what I'm talking about. Like, this is not optimal play. Don't do this. But do this. We're buying to those horses. Let's get that horse. Let's get this shit going, all right? Again, we're staying on archery. Moving towards archery. We're going to pull our warrior back here to this side of the river. And we'll actually hang out there for a minute. Meanwhile, we'll go get those online. And now we finish that other builder as much as we want our monument. Actually, fuck it. I want my monument. There, I spoke English. <laughs> anyway. Let's go grab this goody hut. We basted. Basted. Okay, I, this coffee isn't helping. Uh, English is not my strongest fucking skill set. Speaking it shouldn't be this hard when I've been doing it all my life. Anyway. Uh, pum pum pum. I think we'll go this way and let the barb clear out. Okay, here come the bat, big bad enemies, right? You know what? Because the AI is so stupid and they'll literally not funnel their troops in, they'll just sit here with this guy attacking us. I'm going to move in further. We're going to let them come in. Like, you're trying to prove a point here. Okay, so they're they're at least across the river with one. That's got to count for something. We're gonna keep them fortified. We just finished state workforce, so now we're gonna come in. We're gonna put in the uh, Golgade policy card for our 50 cent there. We're clearly not gonna be building like our army and builders at the same time, so we're going urban planning. Hey, before I forget, let's also hunt. Oops, unlock those. And we just ultimately want a production focus. Okay. So now keep in mind, not only did you have to do all that research to get to masonry, to get to city walls, and then fucking build them, there's still 80 production to build. So when you look at it, right, a slinger is 35. But now we just put that policy card in where we get a 50 cent per 50 cent. Jesus, fuck, Tyler. Where you get a 50% production boost. So that essentially cuts 35 production to 17 and a half, right? So you can literally get four slingers for the price of your city walls. So we're also going to stop archery right now at four turns. Because if we let it go one more turn, then as soon as we kill a unit, we get the tech. We don't want that. We want to be able to kill stuff and still build slingers. Because it's better to build slingers than it is to build archers. Alright, so we're switching out of that. Now, in this game, I probably want to go for writing next, I would imagine. Or maybe bronze working, because I'd be doing a military thing with her. Yeah, bronze working. No, I'm going to back paddle. Writing. As you can see, they still haven't even came in yet. Let's give them a little something. Maybe if we attack them, it'll like 
get them pissed off at us. Like, I don't know. I honestly don't know why they're not coming in to attack. This is kind of anticlimactic for what I was expecting, to be honest. I was like, oh, when I let everybody in, they'll just fucking fly right in. But apparently not. Look at that. We're down to one turn per slinger. Not too shabby. I really want my promotion. But I think I'll skip a turn. There's our boost for our archery. And that's why we wanted to, to wait and not get it down to three turns. Because now we can still get more slingers. But anywho. God, I don't have double experience on my scouts. Oh, well. Okay, here you go. This is as far as I'm taking this. Please say you get this by now. Look at this, okay? It's turn 47. We didn't even get to masonry in the other game until like 51 or 52 or something like that. Okay? So it's turn 47. We have four slingers that each have a combat range strength of 15, which means that's like 60 total range strength per turn compared to what was it like 20? I think. Yeah, it was 20 when it first when we first built it at like turn 58. So like 11 turns from now, we'd have a unit that is essentially what 30 percent 33 percent ish of the combat strength that we have right now not to mention we can upgrade these slingers to archers next turn like do you understand now is this enough can i go back and try to be nice and not be an asshole just to prove my point. And there you go. We got archery. We got an archer. You can see we're very well defended against a DD AI. Please do yourself a favor. Don't build city walls. Hopefully this has gotten my point across. I want nothing but the best for you. 